and welcome. I'm joining you today live from our species conservation park, which also happens to be the setting for our latest escape room. Today, I'll be providing you with everything you need to run the survival of species escape room with your students and ensure it's a wild success. For those of you who haven't done a style escape room before, let's take it from the top. Style contains a range of hands-on and engaging lessons for students. Every year, we release a new escape room. Style's escape rooms are an interactive and engaging lesson that involves students working collaboratively to complete a range of challenges. The escape room starts with students watching an initial video that sets the scene. And then a timer starts counting down. Students must work together in teams to complete a set of eight challenges. As they solve each challenge, students are provided a code which they enter into an interactive simulation or alternatively onto a paper answer sheet if you'd prefer to run this as a completely off device activity. The aim is to complete all the challenges and find all of the codes before the timer runs out. For those familiar with physical escape rooms, the style escape rooms are a simple version that you can set up and run in your own classroom. There's no need to renovate unless of course you want to. This year's escape room is centered around the theme survival of species. The theme aims to highlight the importance of science and innovation in ensuring the survival of different species in our ever-changing world. In the introduction video, students meet wildlife conservationist Marie. Marie explains the important work that scientists are doing around the world in protecting vulnerable species under the threat of extinction. Marie highlights the ongoing work that conservation parks and sanctuaries play in the rescue, rehabilitation, re-release and subsequent monitoring of these species to ensure their survival. Let's take a look. Hello everyone, welcome to our Species Conservation Park. This park is dedicated to protecting species that are threatened by extinction. We have a range of animals, from mammals to reptiles, birds to amphibians, living happily and roaming around areas designed to replicate their natural habitats. These animals are looked after by scientists and conservationists who study their behaviours and mating patterns. This helps us set up specific breeding programs so they can grow their populations. When the animals reach maturity and their populations are big enough, they are reintroduced into their natural habitats in the wild. After they're released, we can continue to monitor their population numbers to determine whether the species is thriving. All of this helps to reduce the threat of the species going extinct and disappearing forever. Do you hear that? It sounds like a stampede. Oh no, it looks like the monkeys got into the electrical fuse boxes and shut down the electricity to the park. Without it, the gates for the different areas of the park will be open. This means the animals can roam anywhere. We might lose track of the animals from these critically endangered species. Quick everyone, stop monkeying around. We need your help. Eight challenge cards are hidden around the park. Solve the puzzle on each card to reveal a code. All eight codes are needed to reboot the electricity. We can then control the gates and help bring all the animals back to safety. Many of our animals are very fast and others are incredibly small. We have to get the electricity running in 40 minutes before all the animals are lost. If you get stuck solving a challenge, you can ask for a clue from your chief research scientist. That's the person playing this video. They probably look a lot like your science teacher. Good luck cracking the codes and please hurry. We always like to have a little bit of fun with those videos. But now that you've got your head around the context for the escape room, let's stop monkeying around ourselves and talk about how you can prepare to use this exciting activity with your own students. The first thing to do is to check out the unit from the style library. Select teach this unit. And this will create a copy of the escape rooms for you to use with your students. Click continue to add it to your own school library. And select the latest escape room, Species Survival. Once you've got your own copy of the lesson, this teaching note appears at the top when viewed in prepare mode. This tells you lots of helpful information, including a breakdown of the lesson and links to all of the associated resources. We've done lots of preparation to make it nice and easy for you to run. We've also road tested the escape room with hundreds of students already to make sure everything will go to plan. All of the info needed to run the escape room is included in our beautifully designed teacher guide. The teacher guide includes details on all preparation needed for the escape room, including required materials, risk assessment and how to set up each activity. 
It also includes a step-by-step -step run through of how you'd run the escape room in your class. And details about all the materials you'll need, including a link to the pre-filled risk assessment template. You'll notice here that there are some challenges that will not require any extra materials, some with minimal materials like a ruler, and some that require a little extra setup. Let's take a look at the preparation that's required. First, you'll need to collect the required materials for each of the practical activities. If you have a lab tech or someone who helps you prepare these types of activities, be sure to give them a heads up about what's required. You'll also need to print some of the documents. We suggest two sets of each of the challenge and activity cards, which will allow you to set up the two stations for each activity. This helps prevent traffic jams and allows students to move freely between the activities rather than having to wait for another group to finish at a station before they can begin. You'll want to print the clue cards and answers and hang on to these yourself. And as I mentioned, there is a handy worksheet you can print for students if they wish to write down their answers before they enter them into their devices or if you want to run the activity as a completely off device activity. There are three challenges in this particular escape room that require a little extra setup. In challenge three, students learn about the wildlife detection dog squad that are working to sniff out and detect a lizard species, the grassland earless dragon. It was thought to have gone extinct 50 years ago, but it was recently rediscovered in its natural habitat. Students put their own noses to the test, trying to identify three different smells. For this challenge, you'll need to set up three mugs labeled A, B and C. They each respectively will contain tea, peppermint and garlic. Cover each mug with aluminium foil, ensuring there are no gaps and use scissors to poke holes in the aluminium foil. Here's a photo of it in action. In challenge six, students explore species survival in the context of ocean acidification and coral gardening, where scientists grow healthy corals from fragments that are then planted back into the ocean to form new reefs. For this challenge, you will need a test tube holder with four test tubes, each containing different solutions and concentrations of sodium bicarbonate, sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Students will use pH strips to measure the acidity of the solutions. In the instructions here, we suggest a set of test tubes for each group, but you also could just use one set of samples and have students use a dropper to drop the pH solution onto the pH strips. On the left, you can see how we set up our test tube racks when we did it with students. And on the right, you can see the students using droppers to drop the solutions onto the pH strips. You can decide whatever will work best for you. Challenge number eight is the only other challenge that needs some extra setting up. In this challenge, students learn about the impact of temperature on a sea turtle baby's sex. For this challenge, they need to use their own flippers to dig through some sand and find the buried turtle eggs. For this one, you'll need to set up a plastic tub with some sand and bury some numbered ping pong balls. The first four balls are the ones needed to calculate the number for the code, and the other two are just distractors. Once again, here's some of our students in action searching for their turtle legs in the box of sand that we'd set up for them. All right, so you've printed your activity cards and challenge cards. You've got your station set up around the room for each of the activities, thanks to the helpful document that you read through. But what else do you need to know about running the escape room with your students? It's time for the fun part. When running the escape room in your classroom, split your students into groups. I recommend three to four, so that all students can have a really good go at each of the activities, but they can be larger or smaller if required. Explain to students how the lesson will work and feel free to get into character yourself. We're never too old. <laughs> Some things I would mention include explaining the setup of the stations, not to mark the challenge or activity cards and to make sure that students reset the stations after so that the next group can arrive and enter it as a brand new challenge. Play the introductory video and start the simulation and then students are off. The challenges are all independent of one another, so they can be completed in any order. Here's an example of one of our challenge cards. It provides some context for the challenge, instructions on how to complete it, and then the question the students must solve. The boxes correspond with the code and match the spaces to input the code into the simulation. 
On each of the eight challenge cards, students are introduced to a variety of issues threatening the survival of a different animal. However, it's not all doom and gloom. Students are also informed of the many ways and innovations that are in place to save these species from extinction. When students solve a challenge, they can input their answer codes into our fuse box simulation and get instant visual feedback if they are correct or not. Inputting all eight challenges into the sim before time runs out will cue a short success video to play. Failing to do so will result in a fail video to play. But all hope is not lost as the wildlife detection dog squad are on hand to bring the animals back just in the nick of time. Oh no, we've run out of time and the animals are getting further and further away. But wait, what's this? The wildlife detection dog squad are bringing the animals back towards us. These dogs don't just sniff out endangered species, looks like they're good at hurting them too. Good job. Even though you didn't manage to crack the codes in time, the animals are safe and we can keep working towards increasing their population numbers. We've just done a quick count and it looks like all the animals are present and accounted for, right down to the smallest reptiles. Congratulations. Let's go check out the rest of the conservation park. Just watch out for those cheeky monkeys. As for the video that plays when you solve all the codes, well, we'll leave that for you and your students to find out. If using devices so that students can enter their answers into the simulation themselves, I suggest one device per group. I'd also suggest keeping devices in a central location. Students can also ask for clues, which have been provided for you in the teacher resources, and these should help them to solve the challenges if they're having little trouble. You can apply a time penalty per clue if you wish to do so. Depends on how mean you're feeling. <laughs> for a device-free alternative, as I've mentioned, there are also printable answer templates that students can use to fill in their codes using pen and paper and a master template with the solutions written in for your eyes only. <laughs> if running without students having devices, you can wait until all students are finished, input the codes together onto your screen and watch the final video together as a class and a bit of a celebration of their efforts. And in terms of my top tips for success, last thing that I'll leave you with is that I highly encourage you to get into the spirit of things. Dress up, use props, make the experience as immersive as possible for your students. Encourage teams to stick together. Some savvy students might prefer to divide and conquer, conquer. but we really want students to work together to solve the challenges and use their communication and collaboration skills. And lastly, teams will finish at different times, so it's worth having an activity for the fast finishers to go on with. All right, it's now over to you. Pounce on into the fun, and I have no doubt you'll have a roaring good time running this escape room with your students.